Hey everyone, it's Jennifer with Rooted in the Rock and I've got something dropping from the business branch right now. Hey everyone, welcome to Rooted in the Rock. I am so glad you're here. Today I'm talking about a little something different. And now for something completely different. I didn't plan this but this is fresh on my mind and fresh in my experience. And I was like, ah, I'm not even sure where I'm going with this, but, and I don't know, it's, this is so wrong on so many levels. Cause I'm like, I don't even know my title. I don't even know what branch this is. I guess it's the business branch, but listen, buying a car. I need a car. Should not be. If this is a huge purchase and it should not be, be like it is depending on where you go okay listen if you are someone who sells cars or someone who needs to buy a car soon this is for you okay <laughs> especially especially if you are a christian working at a car dealer or you own a car dealer listen to me <laughs> pay attention okay okay I know how these car dealers work. Okay, I, I trained and a long, long, long time ago, I trained and I worked at a car dealer. And of course it ended up, I was at a crooked car dealer. There's a whole nother story with that. But anyway, everybody knows it. Okay, the car dealers, you know, they want you to buy something today. They believe that if they let you out the door, you're never gonna come back and you lose the sale. So they do everything they can in their power to keep you there and to get you to buy something today. Oh, please don't leave. Okay, please don't do that. It is so frustrating. So people don't even want to come to you because they know that's how it's going to be. Okay, there is nothing wrong with showing someone a car and spending time to talk to them even if they're not sure what they're going to buy. People should, listen, you have the right to go to different car dealers when you're trying to decide which car. And even if you mostly know, like right now I'm trying to pick between these two, right? I should be able to go and drive this one, go and drive this one, take a look at them and decide. But no, depending on the car dealer. Now there's one I've dealt with that I'm going to like run screaming back to because they're awesome and amazing. But this other one that I went to today, and I went to the one that was not right here because the one right here was terrible last time I went there to look at a car. Anyway, long story. But, you know, I went and I just, I told them ahead of time, I'm, look, I'm deciding between these two. I just want to drive it, take a look, see how I feel. But then, of course, you know, ugh. anyway, so after the drive, you know, you come in and they want you to sit down and they want to run numbers and do all these things and try to, you know, what can we do to get you here today? And I'm like, I'm, it's not happening today. Sorry. Like I've told you ahead of time, it's not happening today. I got to do my homework. Okay. If you're buying a car, do your homework and don't be afraid to tell them no <laughs> and tell, you know, look, I'm not buying anything today. I'm doing my research. I want to look at it. There is nothing wrong with that. And if you are a car dealer, you should, you should treat your customers. Look, I hate to bring Chick-fil-A into this, but look, there's a reason why Chick-fil-A has a reputation for good service, right? Earth angel, earth angel. It's very important. Now, now I know, so in America we have, you know, customer service here is a whole different level than a lot of places, but, but, and, and I'm proud of that. Like we, customer service is really important. I grew up like, Ugh. Anyway, sorry, I <laughs> can keep track. Where am I going? Okay, customer service. Like, you need to be pleasant and kind and don't judge. You never know. You can look at someone, they come in in raggedy shorts and a dirty t-shirt. They may be someone who's got a whole pile of cash in the bank and they're going to pay cash right away as long as you treat them right. I didn't see that coming. Do not judge anyone who comes to look at a car. There are plenty of people that come and they don't have money for a car and they just wish they could have this one. You know, stuff happens. You never know, but definitely never judge, okay? Treat them nicely. Treat them with respect, okay? They're your customer. They're, you know, if, if you're just going to rush them 
Or like, for instance, today I was on my way, made an appointment with a guy, less than 10 minutes, I was on my way, less than 10 minutes before the appointment, I was actually going to be early. And he texts me and is like, hey, can we make it 11 o'clock instead? Because I've got another customer and blah, 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 like change the appointment on me. And I was like, dude, that's not cool. But I'm like, whatever, I'm just, I'm going to roll with it. So I was like, oh, fine, I can go stop at Hobby Lobby. You know, I'm never, never sad to, oh no, I have to go into Hobby Lobby. <laughs> it's one of my favorite places on the planet. But anyway, you know, I'm like, oh, I can stop at Hobby Lobby. It's fine. I go past the car dealer. I pull into the Hobby Lobby, park, turning off my car. He texts me again. Oh, okay, I'm ready now. You can come now. I have access to the entire curse word library. Are you serious? So, not only did he change the appointment on me, but then a few minutes later rescinded it. Oh, come now. And I had just parked at my favorite store. That was, oh, it, like, I was already flustered, like, upset with this guy before I even got there. And then, when I got there, like, you know when you go to a car dealer, usually it's like vultures in the parking lot, right? Usually someone comes to you before you even get in the door. Nobody there. Nobody came out. I had to, like, go in and talk to the person at the front desk. She was, like, trying to find him, page him. I mean, he came walking out, but I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then he ended up passing me off to someone else anyway. Seriously? Oh. Oh. So. If, if, you're, if you're buying a car, do your homework ahead of time. Pick a few, go look at them, but don't be afraid to say, no, I'm not getting anything today. I just want to look and then I'll make my decision. No, no, thank you. For one thing, you're going to see how they behave. For another thing, you're going to see, you know, if how good they are at communication. Are they going to call you back and check up on you and make sure everything's good? You know what I'm saying? Because that's what happened to me time before this. Uh, I was looking at another one beside, uh, instead of the one I picked. And, like, dude never called me back. I was really, really interested. And we had cash to pay for the car because we had saved it up. Okay. And dude just never bothered to call me back. I'm not going to chase him down. If he wants to sell me a car, he should at least, you know, contact me. And, oh my gosh. Anyway. Okay. If you are a car dealer, listen. If you're a Christian car dealer, car salesman, whatever. Where does our faith lie? Do we have to, oh, we have to, that's fear. Okay. Do we have to keep the customer here? Otherwise they won't buy it. Listen. Do you, who do you trust in? Do you trust in God or do you trust in your ability to keep the customer there? See what I'm, you see what I'm saying there? Like, listen, as a Christian, our faith is in God and he will, he's the one that prospers our business. It is not the work of our hands. He's the one that blesses the work of our hands. So if you are a Christian car dealer or a car salesman, that integrity, you need to have that integrity. That Christ-like uh, behavior. You know what I'm saying? Like treat your customers nicely with love and care. And, you know, like calling them back if you need to. Being honest. Okay? Oh, car salesmen have typically in history, historically had a terrible reputation for a reason. And a lot of times they're dishonest. And like, look. I let, look. Oh, if you're a customer... Look up the blue book, you know, the, or whatever, the trade-in value for your car before you go as well. Because the car dealers, typical ones anyway, will try to very, very much shortchange you. Like the one I went to today, the offer they brought me, it was t more than $10,000 under the blue book value. I was like, really? I know what I have. <laughs> and it's a lot more than that. And then, so I told the salesman, I was like, yeah, that trade-in value is about 10000 short. Because I know the value. I've looked it up. And so he went back to his manager. They always bring you the lowest value first, right? The lowest offer first. Then they got to go back to the sales manager. And he does you up another one. And so they bump it up. So then, oh, magically, 6500 more for my trade-in appeared. 
why didn't you bring me that to begin with? Because they're trying to make as much money as possible and they're going to bring you the lowest offer possible to begin with. Okay, so I'm like, mm, that's not good enough. Sorry. And so he went back and they changed it. Still wasn't very good, but at least they weren't charging like 10000 extra like a lot of dealerships are doing right now or tacking on extra money because of shortages or whatever. Just always remember, like don't get, now sometimes there are situations where you need a car ASAP. I need a car and whatever, there are certain situations. But most of the time, you don't have to have a car today. I know you might want one today, but you don't have to have a car today. Take your time. And if their offer doesn't sit well with you, don't strap yourself to do that. Like I was told when I was being trained a long time ago, a long time ago, ancient history, I was told, oh, anyone who comes in, you know, a lot of people, they, there's, a, there's a payment in mind. They say, I want my payment to be this, what you know what's the best that i can afford what can we do and there's nothing wrong with that however most normal regular car dealers depends on where you go but they already have in mind that when you come in giving them a number like that they know that everyone who comes in with a number like that can afford at least fifty dollars a month more than they say when they come in sorry that's just wrong <laughs> i don't like that it's it's I know that they're in business to make money, but you can be in business and make money with integrity, okay? You don't have to like give the customers the planet and cut yourself in order to serve them, but at the same time, you don't have to try to gouge them to get as much, you know, you're not trying to milk them for as much as possible either. That is not, I don't feel like that is godly behavior. I just don't think that's good human behavior, honestly, not just a godly thing, okay? Not cool, man not cool but uh, there's just there's just a few things that were driving me driving me crazy right just things like that when you look at a car listen if you have a good salesman okay when you go out to look at a car they should walk you around the car you look at the outside then you look at the inside features they should be telling you about it and then you go for your test drive and a good car dealer will ask you for your key. If you're doing a trade-in, they should ask you for your keys before you go on the test drive so they can look at your car while you're off on the test drive. You know, they always like stretch. Anytime we've bought a car at a normal car dealer, it's like a four or five hour, hour I, I, bleh, four to five hour ordeal. It's been 84 years. Okay, it always takes forever and it shouldn't. If I like know what I want, like have the, I told them last, that one time I was like, just have the, all the paperwork done. Everything's good. Let's just sign it and be done. And it still took like four hours. Ugh! Should not take that long, especially if you're not even financing people. Come on. Anyway, they should, so I'm telling this for buyers and for people who are car sales people and dealers and whatever. You should have a look around the outside. You should talk about the features. You should look at the inside, talk about the features, and then take your drive, okay? The person I was with today, she was new. God bless her. She was new. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. There's the Southern one, right? <laughs> I don't ever say that. I'm not that Southern. I'm only, I'm only hybrid. <laughs> um, but she, she didn't know, really know many, she told me she was new to begin with, but she didn't like, like I was basically giving her a tour of the <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible uh anyway like poor dear like she didn't know much about it and like it was brand new they had just like it just come off the truck like a couple of days ago but they hadn't even the the steering like the stickers and everything was all over there was still like a tag hanging I drove it with the information tag hanging on the gear shift. I, before we went out, I had to peel myself the plastic off the steering wheel because I was like, I really don't feel comfortable driving with this on it. Like, I was like, no, no, no. You don't take someone to a car to show them, here, drive this vehicle I want you to buy, but it had plastic everywhere. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was one of, the, one of uh, poor dear. I, nothing against her, but. Like they, they obviously aren't doing well to train her. They should be trained. If you are a car dealer, 
you know, you're going to hire salesmen. Some of them are going to be experienced. Some are not. Even if they are experienced, you should have training. When you have custom, when you have new salesmen come in, they should have training on the values of your company, how you expect them to behave, and they need to learn how you expect them to treat your customers. And you should make sure they have like a basic training of how to show someone a car or give them time, like their first week should be obviously flying with a partner, but also like they need to be sitting down and studying the different vehicles in the lineup and what the different features for the different models are. I can do that online at my house, <laughs> okay? From the brand website, I mean, come on, this, this is basic. And you really, you could apply this to any different business. I'm talking specifically about car dealers, but really, I mean, just as Christians, we are called to you know, be excellent, right? Excellent. <laughs> it, it's you know we are we are called to to do everything with as much excellence as possible, right? And and you know trust in the Holy Spirit, trust in God. You know, if you treat people right, like if if they are a, a good you know a good person, well, some people aren't good people, but and you have to watch out for that. We're called to be wise about that too, right? But you know, if you consistently and build a reputation. I'm sorry, I've got a hair and it's driving me crazy. Okay, I found it. Um, if you consistently, if you build a reputation and you consistently treat your customers with care and respect and love, it will increase your business. Go rely on God for your increase. He is the one that, that supplies our needs, right? He will, will increase. Ask him for the wisdom to know the things you need to do to increase, you know, to help, you know, the business and whatnot, and just trust him, treat people with kindness and and uh, compassion and understanding, and that, you know, like I will, I am going to a different dealer who I've already been to, but they didn't give me a fuss. They knew I had to leave for this appointment. They like communicated with me right away. They treat me nicely and respectfully, and their product is honestly just better quality. But I was trying to do my due diligence and, and I'm trying to, you know, be smart and look at all the things before I make a, this big decision, right? It's kind of important. You know, like if you treat your customer well, you know, sometimes they might e not even like your car better than others, but they come and buy cars from you because they like you and, and how nice you are and how you treat them. Okay. Godly principles in your business, y'all. It's we rely on God. We trust Him. He will bring the increase. Treat others as you would like to be treated. You don't want to go to a car dealer and get treated like that. Homie, don't play that. So don't do it to your customers. And those of you who are, you know, going to buy cars, you know, do your homework. Be prepared ahead of time. You know, and of course... As Christian consumers, you can't always trust someone who says they're Christian either. You have to be wise about that. I have seen it happen, I don't know how many times, where like my parents, oh, there's someone in the church or they're, they're a Christian, but they did shoddy business. Shoddy, well, it's usually shoddy work is how you use that word, but you know what I mean. It was not good business and they, they didn't do well for them. So, of course, be aware of that too. Right, just because someone says they're a Christian doesn't mean they've really earned your business. Like, we should support each other, right? But if you see that the work is not good, don't feel bad about taking your business somewhere else, right? Okay, be smart, love God, show God's love to others, and have a great week. I don't even know. Oh, what branch is this even from? I guess it would be business. That'd be my first business post. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>